Hey beautiful people, my name is Brittany. And I'm Connor. And today we're going to be sharing about why we're moving out of our RV into an apartment. We've been getting, well I've been getting a lot of questions about this, little things here and there. I've been getting a couple. Yeah, people pick up on things. <laughs> Good job, you guys are smart. Detectives. <laughs> And so we're going to go down and answer some of the commonly asked questions that we've gotten from for you. For you. The commonly asked questions. Com I like that. <laughs> Before we jump into this video, we wanted to take a quick moment and share with you about our brand new membership site. We've created it because we want to create this family with all of you. We have videos on there of us hanging out, raw processing videos, awesome discounts for all of you, and access to our full-on sex ed videos. We really want to see you there. We're really excited about it. So much love to you. We'll check you on the other side. For those of you who don't know who Winnie is or what she's all about, feel free to check out this other video we did where we talk about her and tour you around her. But basically, she is our 20-foot RV. She's a Toyota. She's got a Toyota truck and she's a camper built on it. And she's pretty special to us. She's very special. She's a sweet girl. <laughs> We are moving out of Winnie because initially we were doing a lot of handstands and we still want to do a lot of handstands and in order to do the particular practice of handstands that we want to do, this uh, space just doesn't, isn't quite adequate. In addition, I think um, when we were living in her full time, we were just finding that it was just a space issue. We loved spending the time that we were spending in here together and also sometimes we just wanted a little more space. I feel like for a while Winnie was the abundant hell yes yeah. choice for us for a couple of years. And then when it started to shift and we realized as we were overseas living in apartments how great it felt to have the space, it felt like, oh, maybe that following that thread of abundance has shifted for us. We have lived in Winnie off and on for two years, maybe even a little over two years. And uh, before that, I lived in her on and off as well for about a year. When Connor and I first started talking, I had just bought where I was just buying Winnie. Mm -hmm. And I went to Rhode Island to fix her up, totally gutted her, renovated her, and played around in her for about a year, or maybe a little less. And then we started hanging out in like the same physical space and doing work on her together and then living in her full time together. We travel year round uh, to a lot of different places in the world to teach and just to enjoy life. And so when we were in Austin specifically, and in the United States in general, we stayed in Winnie. When we were outside of the United States, obviously we stayed in other places. But we've lived in her in the Northeast, we've lived in her in Texas, we've lived in her in California, and then we've traveled with her from all of those places as well. And now we've been back in Austin, Texas, which is like, if we had a home base, I would call this, this our home it. base. And we're definitely feeling like putting down more roots here. Yeah. We've been here for maybe about a month, maybe a little over. And in that time, we've, we've been living in an apartment. Gosh, there's so much to say about what I love about living in Winnie mm. and RV living and RV life. I actually made a whole video about it. I feel so much love for it. But some of the things that come to mind are having our home with us everywhere we would go and the intimacy of this space, how easy it is to keep clean, how it felt like Winnie feels like her own entity that cares for us in these little ways with like the rain on the roof and how close we get to be with one another. Yeah. Coming into Winnie in the last month uh, since we've been in Austin and living in this apartment, I every time feel this like wave of nostalgia. I'm like, oh, I love her. And I do, I love her. I love the space. It feels like our home. And uniquely special because we built that together. Um, that, that feeling of a home and partnership and being able to move with another person in a very small space and make it work for us is something that's, uh, it's, it, it's really beautiful. And it's, it's just, that's what comes up for me when I enter Winnie. I've loved elements of the freedom that she offers in being able to take her anywhere within 
you know, this land mass <laughs> whenever we wanted. That's felt really, definitely freedom is something that we value in our lives. Yeah. One thing that came up for me that I didn't even know I was feeling as much until we moved out of her was trying to find places to park at night that felt really ideal and really comfortable. I think we live a pretty low stress lifestyle and we like feeling like everything is good and everything is happening for us and, and that's the that's the energy we put into finding a place when we would go to sleep at night. And also I noticed that in retrospect, I think I had just a little bit of nervousness about somebody knocking on the door or somebody seeing like the light on their residential street and not like liking that or, mm -hmm. you know, watching a movie or playing some music and just feeling like, you know, someone might feel like, oh, hey, there's somebody living in there. And, and that, that kind of feeling, I, yeah, mostly it wasn't there, but I notice now that we're not in it, I think it was, it was in my heart space just a little bit that I didn't quite feel 100% comfortable all the time. We get a lot of questions about parking and where we'd stay overnight. So actually, I think Connor, you did an awesome video on parking on our channel. So if you're curious about that in RV life, I really recommend checking it out. Yeah, in a similar vein, I noticed feeling like I wanted to have a space that I could feel really comfortable and open, particularly in expressing myself sexually. Yeah. Like with you or with our other partners and feeling like we had the space for that and I didn't have to be quiet or yeah. or if I wanted to like get up and dance and move around that I could do that as well. Yes. And we never had an incident where somebody knocked on the door or anything like that. But like you said, it's like this anticipatory yeah. state. Maybe. Exactly. Yeah, and movement in general, you know, like we're such movement addicts and we would always go train outside in these certain locations and that was awesome. Yeah, I loved that. But sometimes it. you just want to hang out inside and like stretch, like do your splits or do a handstand and you can kind of do those things in here, but if two people want to do them, it's like you have to really, you have to really try. So. <laughs> oh, uh, going along with that, taking naps, there were times oh, yeah. where, or even just laying down and resting indoors somewhere. Right especially in the heat of the day mm. in Austin, Texas. It can be really challenging. So we kind of worked with that and we ended up renting a friend's driveway for a long period of time, especially when it was so hot out and we used an AC unit mm -hmm. and we totally rocked that and totally made it work. Totally rocked it. That helped elements of it. Yep. And definitely still wanted a larger space. So we started to play around with like Airbnb and just notice the difference we felt when we had mm. more space. Yeah, there was a physical spaciousness and an emotional spaciousness that came along with that, that I, I really noticed the difference there. This this kind of helped me understand more about what my ideal is right now around simple minimalist living. Mm -hmm. For example, I've been fascinated with the tiny house movement, I think like most people. And at times I felt like, oh, I would wanna like live in a tiny home. But I think what I realize is I want to live in a home that has basically nothing in it. A simple home. Like we have now a simple home, but an expansive home. Mm -hmm. I want high ceilings so we can do acrobatics and I want big open spaces that we can play in. And like different delineated sections so that one person can be creating a certain type of energy here while another person is creating a certain type of energy over here and they're, they're not like in the same space. Abundance really comes to mind when I think about this change. Mm -hmm. I think that sometimes people switch to RV living for multiple reasons and one of them may be that they feel like they need to cut corners or kind of like downsize and I think it's really great for that and helpful simplifying your life, simplifying your finances and that just hasn't been our experience. I feel like we really chose it because we wanted to live in an RV yeah. and now we really want to live in a bigger space. It's funny when we get questions about our future, the future of our relationship or <laughs> our future plans because I feel like our life is such that we love living in the present moment and having the freedom for things to unfold and we're always growing and changing. And of course, we totally have plans, um, but we also don't. We are really fluid with them most of the time. And so, no, no you. I was just gonna say like, yes, it's totally possible, um, not, I don't have a plan on it per se, but I can I can definitely see using her for certain like excursions or if we were going to do an extended trip or if we just wanted to play around with this space again, 
and it's also not calling to me right this second. I'm really enjoying our space uh, that we're renting right now in Austin, just like loving it. So yeah, I think that's that's my truth right, right this moment. I've noticed, like part of me wants to be like, probably not, but who mm -hmm. knows. But what I realize is that whenever I make a decision, it's like with the same gusto that I've once made the very opposite decision. <laughs> and so I remember feeling this sort of fire about living in an RV and thinking like, I never want to live anywhere mm -hmm. ever again. So I feel super open to whatever we decide excites us. Same. At this very moment, I don't see any good reason to sell her. I think any amount of money that we would get for her is not really worth it um, for what it is, like our emotional connection with her, but also that she's just a really special vehicle, like she makes a lot of practical sense. And so I, I don't really see the benefit right this moment, um, but I'm also not totally opposed to it either. Yeah, on one hand, I love the idea that others could really love and enjoy her, and I know some of you have expressed an interest in her, <laughs> and that feels really good. We have um, loaned her out to friends here in Austin, and that was a really cool experience. So I love sharing the specialness of her with other people. And also, I've seen her in our future at different mm -hmm. times. We've talked about we really want to get land, and I could see living in her on yeah. the land for some time. We've also talked about like in the future when we have a child, like maybe they'll want to like be in Winnie or live in Winnie at different times. It's such a fun little fort. Yeah. And gosh, those are just two of the fantasies. And she feels like such a part of us and me. She feels like she came to me during such a special mm. time and I've put so much love into her and we've put so much love into her. She yeah. feels like family. Thank you all so much for watching this and for your curiosity about our RV and our life. If you guys haven't checked it out already, we have a joint channel and a joint website, a joint membership. There's lots of cool ways that you can get involved with us, see more of our life behind the scenes if that's something that interests you. And I mean, just thanks. I love doing this. I love making videos with you on my channel too. Yeah, me too. I love being on your channel. Thanks for having me. Heck yeah. Talk to you guys later. Mwah! <laughs> because the aggressive ones... Let's try that again! <laughs> ...are not... We don't answer the aggressive ones. Oh, let's do it again. What word were you thinking of? I don't know. Commonly. Oh, commonly? Ah.